Hello everyone, today we're going to look at $50 worth of carded coins that I bought from a card show, I mean a coin show. This um, is a dealer that uh, comes from the Knoxville, Tennessee area. He specializes in foreign coins and tokens. So the two great things that most American coin collectors don't really care all that much about, but I love foreign coins and find the tokens interesting. And so uh, he's one of these dealers that deals with foreign that knows exactly what he has. And so... Uh, prices them accordingly and so the price that I got is exactly what is written on here they're pretty good prices for the most part uh, so uh, I'll, I'll spend you know a hundred dollars from him he'll take a dollar or two off but for the most part uh, it, I'm, I paid exactly what it says on here and we've got fifty dollars if you add it up yourself so we're gonna start with this coin from Israel and oftentimes on their mint set, they will add a Star of David on the coin, and that normally does not appear on uh, their coins uh, that are meant for circulation, only the ones that were part of mint sets. And so uh, I didn't have any of those until I got this one. So it is the 5 Agarot coin, their calendar 5734, and our calendar 1974. That's where it has five Agarot and uh, their date in Hebrew. We'll move on to a... Uh, most of the coins that I find from Jordan are nickel in appearance, but this one is bronze-plated steel. The other side is going to give a, a date of 1997 and their calendar 1417, KM56. This is a one Kirsch coin. Now we're going to move to a bimetal, I mean a uh, colorized coin from Panama. So when the mint colorizes uh, the coin, that's when it's good to keep onto it. It's when people take uh, U.S. quarters and then colorize them. That's not so good. But when the mint does it, that's when it is interesting. So this is from Panama, and it features, there is a series of coins uh, featuring the 100th anniversary of the Panama Canal. And so there are um, six different coins in the series from 2016. Now, um, this one is uh, has a, uh, as you can tell, a, a ribbon where it's colorized blue with white letters on top of a 100 años is 100 years. This is a quarter of a Balboa, so that's like saying a U.S. quarter dollar. They make their coins the same shape and size as American coins, and they have the, their currency pegged to the United States currency. So uh, I could uh, take this to trade it in and get a quarter for it, a U.S. quarter. So interesting note here is that the 100th anniversary was 2014, but the coin was made in 2016. So I guess it took them a couple of years to actually get uh, to doing that, but uh, pretty much all of the Panamanian coins from the last 20 or 30 years have this reverse to them. Here is uh, something that I didn't realize. France, who uh, had been making coins for French Polynesia, which includes uh, most well-known Tahiti and Bora Bora, but they made separate but similar looking coins for New Caledonia. Well, they decided um, just uh, within the last decade that they wanted to merge, for currency purposes, they wanted to merge both of these together, and they now call it the French Pacific Territories. And instead of just calling it the franc, that's the CFP franc. And so uh, they started printing banknotes in 2014, but the first year they made these coins were 2021, so this has only been a couple of years. I'll also add that they've added the uh, smaller islands of Wallace and Fatunia Island. Fatuna? Fatunia? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But they, uh, those are also added to the French Pacific Territories. Uh, copper nickel. And then 
Uh, this sailboat design is going to be the uh, reverse of these coins. So this is one of those things that you'll learn when you buy the coin that I, I didn't realize that they had been doing that. We're going to move to China. And the modern 1-1 coin is uh, very easy to find, but I've never seen one of these ones that circulated from the early 1980s. This uh, circulated from 1980 to 85. It's the Great Wall of China. KM18, some catalogs will say Y27. And uh, maybe this one's pretty rare, but uh, I had never seen this. So there's the look of a Chinese coin that we're used to seeing. So I uh, really like that one. We're going to move to uh, Zambia with a, uh, a modern uh, design 2012. The 50 Nagui has an elephant on it. One of the easiest coins to find from Zambia is the one Nagui that features an aardvark. And that one, I think, is uh, copper-plated steel. This one's brass. And then this is the design that is uh, going to appear on most uh, Zambian coins. Most of African countries have uh, animals uh, surrounding the shield. This one has people with the eagle on the top. So let's move back to China. These are ordered, if you hadn't caught on, by the cost of the coin. So they're getting more expensive as we go along, but these are the $1 coins that we're in right now. So here's another one, but uh, China, of course, has a lot of um, commemorative coins that they make, and even a few circulating uh, commemorative coins that change every year. So uh, in the year 2013... They have this coin of uh, two children flying a kite. And, of course, Chinese kite's going to look different than the kites uh, that I grew up with. So uh, they had KM1521, so uh, that must have changed in the catalog because my catalog said 2080. A brass coin. This looks uh, like the normal circulating one one coin, but I feel like that one is uh, steel, whereas this one's brass. I'm going to move to a Russian coin. So we've got a scene here with a couple of people operating a cannon. It says uh, copper, nickel, zinc is the metal on here. It's a two rubles coin from 2000. Catalog Y664. Like the, uh, almost looks like a metal on the left, the star hanging down. And then how about that big hook at the top? So the name of where this uh, happened uh, apparently is, uh, that would be pronounced Tyra or Tura, Tula. So it's a cannon manufacturing scene in Tula. 10 million of those produced. I'm going to move to Egypt, and I haven't, I find a lot of coins with King Tut, but this, don't think I've ever seen one with the Cleopatra on it. going to be a 50 piastres our calendar 2007 their calendar 1428 there's where it says 2007 but in Arabic numerals brass steel cam 942.2 the point one and point two version of this coin uh, depend on whether or not it's magnetic so that implies that there's a different metal uh, content you can't tell by looking at it, so you have to tell by uh, actually holding it up to a magnet. 
but this is the magnetic variety and it's a 50 piastres coin. Next we have, this is the design of how Saudi Arabian coins look today. So about the only thing that has not changed is the two swords and palm tree in the very center of the coin, but now they're using our numerals 2016, their calendar 1438. And it's historically had so much Arabic written in circles all, around, all the way around the coin that I couldn't really recognize it. But KM77, 50 Halala. And so again, this is a design that I had not seen until I found it for sale. Our next coin is going to be a commemorative uh, one-year coin from Australia on the $1. And it's the 100th anniversary, they call it the centenary of scouting. So Australia probably has some Boy Scouts. I don't know what they call them, but um, must have been formed in 1908. The coin was made in 2008. It's aluminum bronze, KM1039. Flip it over, and uh, there's Queen Elizabeth. Move back to Africa. We've got another coin with a giraffe on it. So this is the one shilling. From 2018, so nickel steel coin, KM45. Oh, son, it doesn't want to focus. Must be trying to focus on the reflection there, but let's flip that one over. So this side of the shield is what we see on a lot of uh, Kenyan coins. That hasn't changed. Now we've got a former Soviet country that you don't find coins from hardly at all. Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, this is one of those countries I actually think I have more paper money than coins from there. Just because they must overproduce their, their paper money and the coins are harder to find. But I don't even actively collect paper money that much, but I've, I've come up with some. So this is 2008. It looks like COM-COM, but it, it's pronounced SOM, I believe. KM-16, nickel-plated steel. Flip this one over, and I, I like that design. It has the eagle. Behind that are some uh, hills and some mountains, and then a radiant sun behind that. So that's kind of a neat design that I don't think I had seen. This is my first coin from Kyrgyzstan. And uh, so uh, someone once told me that if you try to collect one coin from every country, the first 100 are easy. Uh, this is going to be country number 287 for me. And um, that includes number 286 was uh, the French Pacific Territory. So that kind of goes to show how countries come and go. Or in that case, uh, it's a different named place that wasn't its own country because they were ruled by France. We're going to move to a coin from Croatia, and what I found interesting was they have a coin that highlighted the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. So it even says Atlanta on this coin. So you've got the Olympic flame, the five interlocking rings, and then with the little cubes at the bottom, it actually has the letters that spell Atlanta. 1996. The Tulipa, made of aluminum. Croatia, they call their country Hrvatska. Now we're going to move to the uh, country of Macedonia, which is today called Northern Macedonia. This is a five dinar coin. But their uh, coins feature different animals, and this one features a bobcat. 2008, five denarii. If you're not familiar with the modern country of Macedonia, it was one of the countries that 
uh, used to be part of Yugoslavia before that country split up into a bunch of different countries. And this is the one closest to Greek or Greece. And so normally you hear the term Macedonia, you associate that with Greece. And so they're trying to be separate and apart from Greece and Greece doesn't really like that. And so lately in the last about five years ago or so, they have changed their name officially to Northern Macedonia. I don't know if we'll ever see Northern be written on the coins, but it's uh, one of the rare countries that does use the Greek alphabet. We're going to move to Denmark. Queen Marguerite II, Queen. Going to be a 10 kroner coin. Of all the coins in the video, this is the only one that I already had. So I hate it when I spend $1.50 and get a coin that I already had. It is KM 864.1. The point one means the Mint Master initials, which show up here at the very bottom, B heart B, would be different on different versions of this coin. I'm going to move to Aruba. This is a one florin coin from 2016. Aruban coins are controlled by the Netherlands, but the Netherlands moved to the euro. But Aruba is not part of the European Union, so they still had their coin design have not changed over the last few decades, except for when the monarch changes. So here we have a one florin with their newest monarch uh, from Netherlands, King Willem Alexander. So this coin's 2016. KM56. We're going back to uh, Kenya for a bimetallic coin that's recent. This one features a rhino on the five shilling. So pretty tiny coin here. Twenty eighteen KM forty six. Similar look to the last one, except that one is bimetallic on the uh, reverse. Now we're moving to Tanzania, where we've got a 200 shilingi coin uh, featuring a lion and cub. 1998, KM34. How do you like the old school square flip that appears on this one? So the name here looks like Sheikh uh, Abiyad Amani Karume Race Wakwanzaniwa Zanzibar. I apologize that I probably totally messed that up, but it has uh, his date there to the left of his mouth. KM34. So we have another coin from Zambia, and this one is a uh, single year issue. They were ruled by the British until 1964. And so for a couple of years after they were no longer ruled by the British, they made coins that corresponded to British uh, um, pennies up to the shilling. But very simple design. It just says Zambia 1966 has a hole in it made out of bronze. And then when you flip it over, it says one penny. So there were 7.2 million of these minted, but they're kind of hard to find which is why it has a book value of $2 on it. Now we're going to move to a uh, Vatican. A 100 lira coin from 1975. It has 1975 in Roman numerals right here. 
but uh, Vatican coins also have uh, give the name of the Pope, who is also the ruler of the Vatican City. So it's Paul the Sixth. One hundred lira. Here's where it says Vatican City or Cita del Vaticano. So the, the note here is the Holy Year of Baptism, or uh, symbolic of the Holy Year Baptism of Man. But going from uh, what I remember of theology, we have the, uh, uh, the design here, and I forgot that um, I'm not sure how that relates to uh, Catholicism and baptism, but we've got Fishermen. So you look at the top, there are four hands, so that would imply two people here are fishing, and the stories that they would cast down their nets and then pick up lots of fish. So there's a story where Jesus told them to pull up their nets, and it had so many fish they had trouble even picking up the nets. And so I think that's the story that's being represented on this coin. So I like that uh, symbolism. Next up, we have a Russian ruble, or a Soviet ruble. So it's going to be the 130th anniversary of the birth of uh, Konstantin Solkovsky on this uh, one ruble coin from 1987. So he must have been um, either an astronomer or maybe he was a rocket physicist because there is a rocket flying through the stars in the background. So if the coin was made in 1987, he was born in 1857. That's the 130th anniversary of his birth. Coin number Y0205. We have a silver coin. This one's going to be from Syria. I got this one pretty close to spot price. So this label is 2.5 grams uh, or has the uh, silver weight on here. It is a single year issue. 6.3 of these were manufactured. Uh, silver weight 0 0.0482. So that's going to be um, Yeah, well, that's closer to $1 than $2, so it's not that close to spot, but um, it is a 25 piastres, 60% silver, 1947-1366 on their calendar, KM79. Next up is a really tough country to pull up. Mount Chaukuo. And so this goes back to uh, the time between World War I and World War II, where the Japanese took over a portion of uh, China. And during that rule, uh, they called the area Manchuoko. Uh, you've probably heard of Manchuria or the Manchurian Candidate. That's essentially the same region. Uh, coin Y number nine, date of 1941. This uh, the Japanese occupation pretty much ended at the end of World War II. So this is a one Fen coin. It's also, uh, the date is 1941, but they're going to uh, put the date on here as the, the year of the reign of the ruler. So it's year eight of the ruler who had the initials KT. <clears throat> so his name must have been uh, uh, Kang T which is why it's abbreviated KT. So this is only my third coin from uh, Menchalquo. Really tough to find them. So here we have a 100 francs coin from Algeria, and this is a design that looks very similar to the 100 francs coin that circulated in France at the time, but the French coin had their logos of uh, 
um, the, the three words, liberty, egality, and um, I forget the third one, but those were the three words that showed up here instead of just saying France in 1950 and Algeria. <clears throat> I almost bought an eBay lot that had this coin in it, but I would have paid like 40 or 50 bucks for the lot just to get one coin. So I'm happy that I could finally find the coin for 350 But this one is <clears throat> tough to find in uh, good condition. So I wrote books $10 on here. But if you, uh, according to the catalog, if you found this one in MS-63, it'd be worth $20. And if you found it in MS-65, it would be a book for $30 on here. So I'm, I'm not going to say that it's MS-63, but I, I really did like the condition of this one, so I'm happy to have uh, finally picked that one up. Now we're going to move to, uh, this is the $1 coin from New Zealand when uh, they first started on the decimal uh, system, the, the $1 system, when they uh, finally like a lot of the other British controlled places left the uh, the penny shilling pound uh, system and switched to uh, cents and dollars. And I, I've always thought this was a beautiful coin. I had one, but it was part of a mint set. So I was glad to get one that was loose. It is KM 38.2 and the point two means that this coin is readed. The 1967 version of this coin has letters written around the edge, which I'm glad it's not this version because we wouldn't be able to see it inside the flip. But uh, there you go with the uh, portrait of uh, Queen Elizabeth. So I've always thought this was a, uh, a pretty coin. We go to another British controlled country. We've got, um, or area, we've got Guernsey. So we've got uh, 1972, Guernsey has the three lions on the shield, the 25 pence. So this is a crown sized coin, KM 26, 1972. And this one celebrates the 25th wedding anniversary of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. And it features Cupid. So they're married in 47 and the date of the coin was 72. And I think I'm going to make a um, Valentine's Day coin of a video of just this one coin. Then our last coin is a very similar theme because we've got another one with Queen Elizabeth from 1972. But this time it features Isle of Man is the, I mean, they're all produced by the, you know, the Royal Mint, but um, they, uh, they, they, send off these coins to different places, but this was another one that honors the 25th wedding anniversary of Elizabeth and Philip. And so this time they're going to show uh, shields that represent um, this. Would, I guess that would be the shield on the left would be the shield of all of England, or I should say the United Kingdom, uh, which the queen was reigning over. But then Prince Philip, uh, in his princely duty must have this shield on the right that has uh, the plus and the castle and yeah, things like that to it. So it's the silver wedding anniversary. This is not a silver coin, 25 pence. So this one's also a crown, KM 25. Again, has the wedding dates of 1947 at the top, 1972 at the bottom for the 25th anniversary. All right, so uh, we looked at $50. Oh, did I show the queen on this one? Yeah, I think it's probably the same portrait as the last one. All right, so we have uh, $50 worth of coins that we went through right there. Uh, which one was your favorite? All right, thanks for watching. Bye.